The world's leading travel body, the International Air Transport Association, has said today that international air travel won't return to pre-COVID levels until 2024. Simon Westaway is the Executive Director for the Australian Tourism Industry and he joins me now from Melbourne. Thank you for your time, Simon. What sort of impact are we going to see now and obviously heading towards this 2024 date for airlines, travel agents and everyone in the associated industry? Yeah, well, thanks, Peter. Thanks for the opportunity. Look, it's, a, it's again, it's another reality check of just about how painful uh, the impact has been of, of the pandemic, and that the, the road out is going to be a very long one. And look, Australia is highly reliant on its on its airlines. It's, uh, our, our regions uh, require air connectivity, um, and from a now pure tourism perspective, now over fifty percent of our tourism our tourism activity um, requires air. Air transport as part of the as part of the uh, you know the overall package and and obviously the international market which is, is presently closed it's been closed since the end of March or the end of March you know, again it's a, it's a fifty billion dollar um, annual injection of uh, tourism receipts uh, from Chinese New yeah. Zealanders and so forth so it's, it's look it's it, it's stark it's difficult and and I think it's it's a fair call about where we're at in terms of where COVID is globally. It's very good to remind us, you know, it's not just the tourism impact as important as that is, but we need a viable airline industry in Australia, just even for Australians to move around uh, the country in terms of, you know, business and commerce as well as tourism. What happens if this goes on and on to the viability of our airline sector? Because there would be lots of places in Australia that would be very isolated if they didn't have regional flights. Look, it's a really good question. Uh... We're in a really difficult space here at the moment because the domestic industry is really just starting, from an aviation point of view, is really just starting to get back on its feet. And look, we're down an airline. Obviously, Virgin, Virgin Australia are offering a very, in essence, a skeleton operations until they move out of administration and with their new owners. Um, and Qantas um, are, are on the way back, clearly, uh, and you know, they were hopeful at the end of this calendar year to have around about 40% of their domestic capacity back in the market and their international um, capacities, their outline won't even start to come back in until second quarter 2021. So mm. these are optimistic positions based on where we were about three or four weeks ago when the virus, as we know, was obviously clipped along here in Victoria and, uh, you know, there's some obviously warning signs in New South Wales as well. So it, it's, we're in a really difficult, difficult and really tricky phase at the moment. Look, there's a lot of evidence from Airbnb providers and tourism operators saying that people are now looking for destinations that they can drive to. So I've got to ask, you know, are we not going to see air travel get back on its feet in the way it was, forget this IR to 2024 number, until we get a vaccine? Is that going to be where we have the confidence return? Yeah, yes and no. I think people will travel again by, by air. You're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, driving is, is going to be the way of the, the near future and perhaps the medium to longer term. We're going to see, um, you know, an over-representation of drive travel in terms of our visitor economy moving forward. Now, it's always been there. You know, caravanning uh, has always been a pretty important part of our domestic industry. We've got to keep in mind our domestic industry is a $100 billion a year uh, economic generator. Uh, tourism uh, creates one in 12 jobs in this country. But at the end of the day, it is a combination between the air, um, the, the drive, and, and obviously a bit of rail and some bus as well. So, yeah, we're going to see destinations which are close to the capital cities, which you can access more easily by by car and by RV or yeah. van. Also, it is that, as you said, there's that challenge around these you know, more remote parts of Australia. So, top end Australia, northern Australia, particularly Broome, far north Queensland, Northern Territory, it's a long drive from Sydney and Melbourne, isn't it? So, how they are going to cope if we don't have a lot of air travel or, or skeleton services. It's that I believe is a big challenge. I know that's something that the government is starting to exercise their heads around. Now I know this is not necessarily uh, precisely in your remit, but talk to me about travel insurance because, from what I have read, uh, now that we have a pandemic, people will not be able to get cover uh, for COVID. What happens, this is all obviously before a vaccine, but what, what happens if people travel, decide to, to go overseas or interstate or something in the next little while? Does that mean they'll have no cover if they get sick while they're interstate or while they're overseas? Yeah, potentially. I mean, it depends what's 
what's in the policy. I'm not the representative for uh, the insurers, but mm. it's part of the overall package, isn't it? So, you know, with most people, particularly when you travel internationally, you should travel with insurance. It's peace of mind and obviously there to cover for the, um, the uncertain. But uh, these are these are numbers of the hurdles which is before the travel industry. And it's why, you know, I'm a very optimistic person. And, you know, we obviously, our organisations advocated for open borders as quickly as possible when things close, when we can get some practical opportunity, let's get things reopen again. But there are huge hurdles in front of the industry. It's why JobKeeper has been so critical um, to us. It's why JobKeeper 2.0 is absolutely important. We actually believe there needs to be some tweaks to 2.0, particularly around mm. Northern Australia with the seasonality issues and obviously what's occurring here in Victoria. It, uh, numbers of businesses would have um, become ineligible for JobKeeper 2.0 and yet obviously we're in absolutely in the cause of the pandemic here. Yeah, and this will be the real challenge for your industry if there's a specific uh, parcel of support coming forward after we get to September, when it generally winds down for others. You know, particularly look at Victoria, if you get outbreaks again, that will be the challenge. Uh, Simon Westaway, thanks very much for your time tonight. Oh, cheers, Peter. Thank you.